Today we're going to demonstrate the procedure for determining the amount of sodium hypophosphite in an electrolysis nickel plating bath. The sodium hypophosphite is the chemical reducing agent used in this process. And while it's not a test that needs to be performed frequently, it should be performed on occasion to check the balance of the bath. So what we're going to do is we're going to pipette a 5 mil sample of the bath. Using a pipette will give us a more accurate sample. And we're going to pipette that into a 250 mil Erlenmeyer flask. Tap the end of the pipette to draw off the remaining sample. And once we have that sample in there, we're going to add 25 mils of 50% hydrochloric acid, and you can just use a graduated cylinder for this. It's as accurate as you need to be. And then from there, we're going to pipette in, once again, pipetting for accuracy, 50 mils of 0.1 normal iodine. Add that right to our, our flask. Okay, so the iodine is going to oxidize the sodium hypophosphite that is present in the plating bath. We are adding an excess of iodine, so after the sample has sat for 30 minutes and reacted, we will titrate the leftover iodine and that will allow us to determine the amount of hypophosphite present. So again, we're going to tap the end of the pipette to draw off all of the iodine. And then it is good technique to then wash down any iodine residue that's remaining on the wall of the flask with a little bit of the 50% hydrochloric acid. And now what we're going to do is set our timer for 30 minutes and stopper our flask and store it in the dark until our buzzer goes off. Okay, now that our 30 minutes have gone by, we'll shut our timer off here. We'll grab our sample from the dark and we are going to titrate now using a burette the leftover iodine, because remember we added an excess, we're going to use 0.1 normal sodium thiosulfate. And the first part of the titration is going to be a very light yellow colored endpoint. So right now we have the orange red of the free iodine. So we're going to add it at a fairly steady pace and watch for the fading of the iodine. And also be careful, remember we added 50 mils, so depending on how much sodium hypophosphite is in here, we may actually go past 25 mils, and it'd be a shame to go past your burette 25 mils, and you'd have to start over. Okay, so we now have a nice light yellow color. For the second part of this titration, we are going to add 1 to 2 mils of 1% starch solution, and in the presence of iodine, the starch iodine will form a dark blue color and this is our indicator. So we're now going to continue the titration. We're not going to re-zero the burette and now we're going to go drop wise until this dark blue color disappears. And there you have it. So we're looking at the mills of sodium thiosulfate added. We've got 20.2 we will subtract that from the 50.0 mils of iodine, and that number gets plugged into a calculation that can be found along with the procedure on the technical data for all of our NITEC products. And there you have it.